Facebook fam. Back again. All right. This is my day. Went to work. Totally surprised um, by myself. Uh, doing all this coronavirus um, check on all of our patients. Just want y'all to know this is not no joke. This is what I do every day when I come from work. I strip down. Wash my hair. Thank God I have braids. So it's easier to do that. Um, this has been the most stressful, I'll say the last month, to all my Kaiser buddies in Pasadena. We got to hold strong. Um, hey, people might not like that we come on Facebook, we go online, but we need it. Because um, we need support. We need people to understand that this is not a joke. Um, I dealt with a lot of people today. Um, we don't know if they're positive or not. They're trying to say in this droplet precautions. Look, it is airborne. It's everywhere. Droplet, airborne, whatever. It still can get into your hair. Your saliva has it. Your clothes. Your shoes down to your socks. So when I got home, I scrubbed every possible hole the Lord gave me. I made sure to clean. Um, until you go through what us nurses are going through, you will not understand the severity of this. But to not be able to come in the house and hug your kids, kiss your husband or your loved ones and say, hey, I'm home. You just got to run straight to the restroom. You got to take your shoes off by the door. I mean, which we should be doing anyways is taking our shoes off because of where we work. But to have, actually have to strip down, wash head to toe, and isolate yourself for a good 20 minutes. Feels good, I got to say. <laughs> Let everybody else kind of deal with themselves and give me a moment. But... I do that just to kind of gather my thoughts, be able to deal with the family, because after work, we have a whole nother life. It's not like we could just come home and transform. We have to actually come home and be a mom, be a dad, uh, be a, you know, what do you want to say, a social worker, you know, dietitian, everything. So, as you can see, someone's knocking on the door already. That's to tell you, my job doesn't stop because I'm out of Kaiser or I'm off of work. It just continues going and going and going. What I want y'all to do is please heed to the warnings. CDC is only giving you a little bit of what's going on. Just to be honest with you, we do not have enough protective gear for this virus. Being honest with you, they're not being honest with us. So I felt I had the need to come online, be live, and let y'all know what's going on. We are not... They're not protecting us. So we got to speak out to get help. And if this is the way we got to do it, I need more of our nurses, Kaiser Pasadena, Kaiser Sunset, Baldwin Park, wherever I need y'all to hold tight, hold strong. I need y'all to speak up, speak out, get it out there so we can start getting supplies. As of right now, we don't have enough supplies. They want us to use one glove per patient cleaning our hands with some sanitary wipes or hand sanitizer. That's not cool. This stuff is dangerous. We are bringing it home to our children. As of now, we don't know if we infected. We don't know because we can't get tested. All we do is get a little temperature in our air. Okay, you 98, get in. Okay, if I leave and come back, how do you know if my temperature didn't change? I don't get rechecked. I get a little sticker on my chest. Gets me access in and out. That that No, we need to be more proactive. We need to speak up. We need to speak out. We need to let... Everybody know that it's not just those that's sitting in the office in the back. They're not in the forefront like we are. We need to get out there and get our voices heard. So come on, people. Get together. Let's stick to this. You know, together. Let's not have other people tell us, oh, it's not necessary. It's not recommended. No. They're not the ones out there in these people's faces who may or may not be infected, but you got to treat everybody like they are. Nurses, we are affectionate. We're loving. We're emotional. We want to be able to touch, feel, hear, but right now we can't even do that. All we can do is stand six feet away, which is impossible because the patience is right here. So we are running the front lines right now. And I'm asking the nation to get together. I don't ever do live stream. I don't even know if I'm doing it right. I hope y'all are getting a message, but I need everybody to stick together. Um, this has been... Wear and tear, not only on me, but on family. It has been wear and tear on all the Kaiser staff. Even down to the administrators. You know, they do what they can, but I think they can do more. You know, a lot of them stay in the office, kind of run by us real quick.
but we can't run by it. We got to stand there and take it and stick through it. And I'm proud to be a nurse. I'm a happy nurse. I love Kaiser. Very good company. You know, they treat us right. They treat us wrong. But that's any job you get. You're not going to have a perfect administration. You're not going to have a perfect job. We all got to fight for what we need. So that's why we have the union to back us up. We need to, if we need to come up with some type of program to have a speak or a speech or just to get together and have a moment of everybody be able to give their opinions on what they think should be done, I think we need to do that. Because I guess it hit me a little more today because I was by myself. Like nobody was there. It was just me doing all the specimens, trying to make sure everybody, you know, is getting their testing done correctly. You know, if I make a mistake, I could lose my job. I think it needs to be two people. So one person can handle one part. The other person can triage the other. Having one person is unfair. We have enough money to staff enough nurses. We have enough money for PPE. Hell, if you could pay a damn basketball player, what? $3.8 million a year? But you can't even pay your caretakers enough? We get less than, what, sixty grand a year? And cut that in half, you could say thirty, because half of it go to the federal taxes and state tax. So, just letting y'all know, I'm not happy. This is not cool. I'm hoping we stick together. Because of this, just to touch my family, come on now. So let's get together, let's fight this good old fight. Unfortunately, to all my nurses, this is what we signed up for. We got to pray, plead the blood of Jesus over us every day. And I'm asking everybody to do it. And I'm asking you to plead the blood of Jesus over yourself so he can protect you. He can guide you. He can bear your ways. Don't let this scare us and make us all fearful. We just need what we need. We need the all, all administration to listen to us. Just get us protection. That's all we ask. We ain't asking for nothing else. Give us the protection so we can do the job that we signed up for, that we went to school, got licensed for. We didn't sign up to get sick and die. That's not what we're here for. We signed up to help people that we love, people we don't even know. But we're here to do it. So please, stand with us nurses. When you see it on the news, it's real. Everybody who knows me, touch me, feel me, hug me, I'm real, I'm not fake, I don't have nobody behind me giving me a script, I don't have a paper in front of me, you see both of my hands, I don't have no book, I'm in my room trying to keep safe so my kids are safe. I have two kids that are asthmatic, actually I have five, five boys that are asthmatic. This virus hits your lung system, even though, let me tell you, if you didn't hear from the CDC, a lot of stuff you ain't gonna hear, we hear it. You get this virus, it's permanent for the rest of your life because your lungs are affected, you have scarring. You may be free of the virus, but the virus will always be in your lungs. You may not be able to get the coronavirus, but you will definitely live the rest of your life with lung issues. And if you have a child with asthma and you know how it is, they can't breathe, that's exactly what you're going to feel. So this disease... I call it a disease because there's no, number one, we don't have no immunization for it. They still trying to work out the odds and ends on how do you get this, da 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 da, da. Call it a Chinese disease. This ain't no Chinese disease. This is an airborne everybody disease. It can hit you from a zero to 110. So if you have family members that's over 60 years old, if you got people in your neighborhood, go see if they okay, go see if they need help. They telling us that we got enough food, we got enough toilet paper, paper towel, let me tap in the five stores. Zero. Zero. Lies is everywhere. Please, heed to the warning. Stay over at home. If you need to go out and get something to eat, go get something to eat, come back. Please, because we are the ones that need to be healthy to take care of you when you are unhealthy. So to all my nurses, I love you. Stay strong. I know I joke and play a lot at work. But at the end of the day, it's because I love y'all. And I want y'all to smile because in this stressful time, we don't need that. 
We need to be together, make everybody happy, try and get moving. So I know I'm taking long on this, but that's to tell you how serious this is. But all we got to do today, number one, trust God, use our voice. That's why he gave it to us. And plead his blood upon our life. And I pray for your family. I'm praying now and today and forever that he protects your family, your children, your grandkids. We haven't even heard if pets can get this. We don't even know if our loved pets that we have in our homes, outside of our homes, if they can get it and bring it to us. If they lick us, would they, you know, infect us if they have it? We don't know. These are things that aren't being talked about. But I'm talking. So today, you hear my voice. You may hear it again in a week, two weeks, or even a month. But today, God placed something on my heart to speak to you. And he probably put me there today by myself to really see what we in for so I can be the voice for him to let you know what we're facing. So please, I ask you again, keep us in prayer. And I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. I ain't giving up being a nurse. I know the kids are like, Mom, why don't you just stay home? No. This is what I chose to do. This is where God has placed me. I'm very comfortable in my position. I don't have no problem. All I ask is for our administrators, our governor, our president, to be honest. Let the right people speak on what they know so we can get the protective gear that we need to take care of our fellow clients out there our patience out there because as much as we love doing what we do we also want to be healthy doing it because this is not what I want to do every day before I hug my kids or before I kiss my husband or before I say anything to anybody but I did this so you could see the difference of what you've seen earlier to what I have to go through just to make sure my, my family's okay so take care of yourself, be strong, love you, and I pray that your family is safe. Thank you for listening.